Welcome to another Drug Trug episode. Let's learn about digoxin. Here's everything we're going to cover, timestamps down below, and a short quiz at the end. So here's an overview of digoxin. Digoxin is going to work on your heart, and there's a couple ways it can do this. First, we have to learn about the atrial portion of the heart. This is where digoxin is going to help with the chronotropic effect, and we'll get into a little bit more detail later. And you also have digoxin working on the ventricular side of the heart helping with the ionotropic effect. So long story short, you have to know digoxin can do two things. It can slow down your heart rate or increase cardiac output. And we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail later in the video. Now that we know a little bit about digoxin, let's dig a little deeper. So we said we know it works on the heart. And the first thing it can do is decrease heart rate by affecting the atria. The atria is this top portion of the heart, and it does this by activating your vagus nerve in your central nervous system through something called the parasympathetic tone, which is your rest and digest neural pathways. And what digoxin does, it actually activates this parasympathetic or rest or digest tone by allowing acetylcholine to release in your SA and AV node in your heart to slow down contraction. So this way it slows down heart rate because patients with atrial fibrillation have an experience of increased heart rate. And as digoxin works on this parasympathetic nervous system, it actually helps lower that heart rate, which is what we want in these patients. And the second place that digoxin can work is in the ventricles. And this is great for patients that have heart failure because what digoxin does is it blocks something called the potassium sodium pump, which allows the ventricles to contract even harder, which is a benefit in patients with heart failure, because we want the heart to pump out blood as efficiently as possible. And patients with heart failure have a difficult time getting that contractility and being able to pump out blood in that efficient manner. So now that we have a good idea of what digoxin is and where it works in the heart, when do we actually use it? Well, we kind of already touched on this. The first thing is patients that have atrial fibrillation. Fancy way of saying very fast heart rate arrhythmia that happens in the top portion of the heart or the atria. So if someone has atrial fibrillation, digoxin is an option because the atria is beating too fast. And what does digoxin do? It helps slow down the atria, which really slows down that heart rate. And the second group of people that typically take digoxin are patients with heart failure. Patients with heart failure have a very difficult time in the ventricle portion of their heart. They can't pump out blood efficiently. So remember, digoxin helps increase that contractility. It helps increase the push of blood from the ventricles to the rest of the body. So patients with heart failure benefit from digoxin to allow those ventricles to push out blood more efficiently. Now that we know when to use digoxin, let's talk about the actual dosing and any adjustments. The first thing you need to know, digoxin is an older drug, and it has something called a narrow therapeutic index, which is not a good thing. Basically, it has a low margin of error for toxicity, and we'll look into what those levels are. So let's start with atrial fibrillation. For digoxin to work, the concentration in the blood has to be anywhere from 1 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. Now, this is when you take the drug, sometimes you could go to a lab, have the patient do a lab draw to see where their level is at, but the sweet spot for atrial fibrillation is one to two nanograms. And for heart failure, it's less. For heart failure, our target is anywhere from 0.5 to 0.9 nanograms per milliliter. So that leaves anything that's over two is technically toxic. There's a toxicity developing, and we could talk about that in the later slides. 
and anything under 0.5, it's going to be subtherapeutic. It's not going to be working. So this drug's narrow therapeutic index actually falls in the small range. And in that range, depending on what you're treating, has an even smaller range. So you could see how it has a narrow therapeutic index. So when it comes to dosing, it does come in tablets. It also does come in IV, but we're going to focus on the outpatient setting. And the dose, we want to start small. It goes from 0.125 milligrams, it's very tiny, to 0.25 milligrams by mouth daily. Now, this is something that a patient's going to want to monitor, and depending on what you're treating, you may have to go up and or down on the dose. And then, obviously, kidneys come into play because if a patient's kidney function is declining, you also have to decrease the dose of the digoxin. So these are some things that we need to think about when we use digoxin. So now let's talk about some of the side effects that you may see when a patient has over two nanograms per milliliter of digoxin in their system. And this is a progressive model, meaning the very first thing typically you see is nausea and vomiting. Yes, that's common in most drugs, but digoxin specifically, you'll see an increased tick of nausea and vomiting. And then as you increase in toxicity, you actually see too much bradycardia, which makes sense. It means the heart rate is lowering way too much. As that happens, you can also see altered mental status. The reason for that is because your heart's slowing down, it's not pumping enough blood, so some patients start to develop that altered mental status. One thing that's very unique with digoxin is if the toxicity keeps increasing, they start seeing these blue and green kind of halo vision. It's very specific to digoxin, and at this point, the toxicity is relatively high. And if it keeps going up, there is a chance of death. Remember, we said that digoxin has a very narrow therapeutic index, so we want to catch the patient as quick as possible at the nausea and vomiting stage before it progresses. Let's do a quick summary of everything we learned and then a short quiz. So we talked about digoxin and how it works on the heart. We know it could work at the atrial top portion of the heart, and it could also work in the ventricle lower portion of the heart. And it does this by either working in our vagus nervous system, which is our parasympathetic pathway to help lower heart rate. And it can also work on our ventricles through that potassium sodium pump to help increase the contractility of the ventricles to help allow blood flow to push through the body at a more efficient rate. We know that digoxin is an older drug. It has a very narrow therapeutic index. And heart failure has that specific range of 0.5 to 0.9 nanograms per milliliter. And then atrial fibrillation has the sweet spot of 1 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. If we go outside of this range and we go too high, we do see some toxicities and we see nausea, vomiting, too much bradycardia, some altered mental status, that weird blue-green halo vision, and then even potentially death. So let's jump into the quiz and see what we retained. Which two indication does the Jackson work for? Which channels or receptors does the Jackson work on? Which of the following is not a side effect of digoxin? What is the concentration range of digoxin when you're treating heart failure? Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if this helped you.